and welcome. In this workshop, we will demonstrate how to generate a polyhexco volume mesh in an electronics enclosure using the watertight geometry workflow in ANSYS fluent meshing for a conjugate heat transfer analysis. During the workshop, we will explore how to add local size controls such as BOI, curvature and phase sizing. We will also demonstrate how to add boundary layer mesh and improve the volume mesh quality. Let's get started. Launch ANSYS Fluent in meshing mode and select the watertight geometry workflow. Begin with importing the CAD geometry of the PCB enclosure while keeping the units in MM which is the same units in which the geometry was created. To be able to see the inside of the enclosure, select the fluid surface and click on transparency. The geometry we have here is that of a printed circuit board placed inside an enclosure. The model consists of fans and its sinks which are used to facilitate an effective thermal management of the PCB. To analyze the airflow within the PCB enclosure, the fluid volume has been extracted during the CAD creation phase. The CAD geometry has been prepared using ANSYS discovery and all the necessary operations such as adding of bodies of influence around heat sinks are performed to make it ready for meshing in watertight geometry workflow. In the add local sizing task, select yes to add local mesh size controls. First, let's assign the body of influence size control to the two BOI regions that enclose the two heat sinks. Change the target mesh size to 1.5 mm and keep all the other settings as default and click add local sizing. Notice that the BOI regions disappear once the BOI local sizing is applied. This is because the BOIs are not a part of the geometry to be simulated and are instead used to demarcate a local region in which mesh of a specific size is created. Generally, the mesh in BOI is of a finer size than the surrounding to accurately capture the flow physics in that region. Next, apply curvature size control to capacitor, hub walls, inlet and outlet surfaces to accurately resolve the curved surfaces of these geometrical features. Enter the local mean size, max size and curvature normal angle values as shown. Finally, phase sizing is applied to the fans with a target mesh size of 1 mm to ensure that fan geometry is well captured. The next step is to generate the surface mesh for the model. The minimum and maximum sizes are changed to 0.5 mm and 4 mm respectively while the cells per gap is set to 2 and the proximity size function is scoped to face and edges. This ensures that thin regions in the model such as the fins of the heat sink and the thickness of the enclosure are filled with at least two cells across their thickness which allows to better capture the thermal gradients when simulating the model. Once satisfied with the inputs, execute the task to create surface mesh. Once the surface mesh has been generated, we need to inform the workflow the type of geometry we are working with. The geometry here consists of solid, fluid and void regions. There is no need of cap openings to extract fluid regions and to apply shear topology. However, we will change any fluid-fluid interfaces to the type internal. There are no changes to be made in the update boundaries task because the watertight workflow correctly identifies the appropriate boundary conditions that need to be employed on the boundary surfaces based on their labels assigned during the carry creation phase. In the create regions task, change the estimated number of fluid regions from 2 to 1. As it is known that there is only one fluid region which is occupying the empty space within the solid enclosure. 
the console reports a warning which says that two fluid regions were identified instead of one. This is because in this case the workflow identifies the enclosure also as a fluid region. The enclosure can be changed to solid region type in update regions task. Also, the workflow automatically detects the void region which is assigned the dead region type. Since our aim is to generate a mesh to perform a conjugate heat transfer analysis of the model, it is generally recommended to add boundary layer mesh even in the solid region in addition to the walls in the fluid region of the model to avoid large cell jumps across solid fluid interfaces. Using the add boundary layers task, let's add 10 layers of boundary layer mesh in the fluid region on all the wall type boundaries with last ratio as the offset method type and 0.05 mm as the height of the first layer. We will further add 3 layers of the boundary layer mesh in the solid regions at solid fluid interfaces with the same settings as fluid region boundary layer mesh. Execute the task and move on to the generate the volume mesh task. We will use the polyhex core fill with method to fill the volumetric regions. This model supports the use of polyhex core fill with method for two reasons. Firstly, because the model consists of structured chord shapes and secondly, the dominant direction of the fluid flow is expected to be along one of the coordinate axes. Leave the rest of the settings to default and generate the volume mesh. After the volume mesh has been generated, it can be inspected by using the clipping plane. Notice the boundary layer mesh is created along the walls in the fluid region and along the solid fluid interface in the solid regions. The orthogonal quality of the mesh as reported in the console is 0.09. Since the recommended quality is 0.1 or greater, it is recommended to improve the mesh quality. For this, the workflow provides the improve volume mesh task which can be accessed by right clicking on the generate the volume mesh task. Return the default settings and click on improve volume mesh. Notice that the orthogonal quality has now improved to a value of 0.15. The mesh is now ready to be exported to the ANSYS Fluent Solver for CFD analysis. That brings us to the end of the workshop.